thousand hotels in the Asia Pac region currently, and you want to grow even more. Why? And you know, you could be too big. Well, I, I don't think we can be too big. But 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 why? You know, Asia Pacific is the fastest growing travel market in the world. So being responsible for Asia Pacific, my job is to make sure that we capitalize on that opportunity. And you know, the, it, it's remarkable, G given not just our growth, but our competitors and the growth in the market, business is, is, remains very strong. So it's, uh, the opportunity is here, and, and we're going to make sure we do our best to capitalize on it. Uh, where exactly are you looking at to grow? I mean, would it be a market like India, which is underpenetrated? And what impact does the global uh, trade war now, well, U.S.-China yeah. trade war, have on your plans? Yeah. Well, you, you know, again, you, you don't build hotels for today or tomorrow. You know, hotels get built for 30, 40, 50 years. So you, you do have to have a, a long-term view. But, you know, the trade wars are certainly a concern. Um, the, you know, the largest travel market in our part of the world is without question China. Uh, in fact, uh, the, the China travel market into the U.S. is down about 10 percent, le less so in Asia Pacific. But a, a decrease in, in the China market would be a concern if the economy softened. Uh, so far, that, that hasn't happened. Uh, but it's something that we, we do keep an eye on. But in terms of our, you know, our growth plans are, are, are broad-based. Uh, you know, in India is a relatively small market. You know, we have 50 hotels out of our, our, our thousand there, and there, there is good, good growth opportunity. But the economy, compared to a lot of the, you know, some of the other ones, aren't the opportunities aren't as big. You know, there's not a lot of tourism to India at the moment. It's predominantly a corporate market. We see more opportunity, of course, in, in China itself, Indonesia, Vietnam, Thailand. Australia also remains a very important market for us. It's a very difficult environment right now. Not only do we have the trade war, we have rising interest rates, and that's causing a lot of problems for emerging market currencies, especially mm -hmm. in this part of the world. I mean, how is that impacting business, and how do you view uh, the business going forward? You know, it hasn't impacted the, the travel business yet. And, and don't, don't think Not it, yet, perhaps? Yeah, I, I don't think it will. I mean, other than the, ultimately, you know, the hotel business is driven by the economy. You know, GDP grows, our, our business grows, right? So that if the you know, rising interest, interest rates slow the economy, then that, that becomes a concern, right? But in terms of the, the currency fluctuation, in fact, sometimes softening currency is actually beneficial for travel. So more for the leisure than the business travel. But if you're thinking of a holiday, you know, it, it does impact your decision. Like, for example, you know, the, with Brexit, the pounds dropped dramatically the last couple of years, and, and, and leisure business has gone up there. A country like India, where we just saw you know, the, the rupee is almost at 73, where there's not a, leisure, a lot of leisure travel, doesn't have the same sort of impact. But uh, say we're in Indonesia, you know, the, the rupee there has dropped significantly. Uh, it, it becomes more attractive, particularly in a place like Bali. Michael, it's uh, rich in Hong Kong. Uh, you've got so many different brands, right from Raffles, uh, Novotel, Sofitel, Ibis. Uh, these are different entry points, uh, as it were, for leisure, business, luxury, etc. Tell me, let's just take China as an example, your biggest market. Where are you seeing the most growth? And because that informs us as to what part of the economy may actually be getting richer. Yeah. Well, I mean, the, the China market is incredibly dynamic. And if you went back five years, the majority of the growth was in the economy sector and in the leisure segment. What you're seeing now is more the mid-scale, and what we refer to as the upscale are the two fastest growing segments in the, in the China uh, hotel market, which is, which is quite interesting because what you're seeing is uh, increasingly sophisticated travelers being uh, a little bit choosier on, on how they're spending their, their RMB. Uh, you know, not that the economy and luxury aren't growing, but the fastest part is definitely mid-scale and, and upscale. Well, a lot of hoteliers talk about RevPAR or revenue per available room. How's that looking in the different segments too? Yeah, it's been, I mean, this year in Asia Pacific, it's been a, a, a very good year. Uh, our rev par is up uh, five percent on, on last year, on like for like, in terms of hotels that were open last year and this year. Our overall revenue is up about about ten percent. It varies a little bit across the region. Uh, uh, Australia softened a little bit, and that's because of a, a lot of new supplies come into the market. Uh, but certainly, China's been uh, very strong for us uh, this year, though uh, September was a, a little bit slower. Uh, Indonesia, Thailand, Vietnam, in particular, has had a really really strong year. Michael, talk to us about your consolidation. How are you integrating all the different brands and businesses that you've acquired? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it takes a, a lot of planning. Uh, like, for example, Mantra, which we where, acquired. Where, where are you in this integration? Well, again, each one's a little bit different. So I suppose uh, Mantra, which we acquired on the 31st of May, it's been, in fact, yesterday was about the 100-day mark. So we've, um, we're, we're a long way down the, the 
path with our, our plan. Uh, we've integrated the, the teams. Uh, the, the, from a guest experience, it's gone very well. From the owners, it's gone, uh, been very successful. Uh, move and pick only happened on the 4th of September, so that's very much at the beginning. Uh, but you know, we've, when you do a lot of acquisitions, you also need to get good at integration, and we've developed a lot of expertise in that. And you can never take it for granted, but it's you know, really important to make sure you do your planning pre-acquisition, and then those first 100 days are really crucial. Uh, hotels now face a lot of competition because of uh, technology. Mm -hmm. uh, how has that disrupted your business, and how are you keeping up with yes. the yes. likes of Agoda.com, for instance? Mm -hmm. Well, that, that's where scale ha certainly plays, plays a part. Uh, what we want to do is make sure that you know, being, being large means that people want to, they, they come to your website. Uh, giving a choice is, is important. And again, part of our strategy with our acquisitions is we do go from economy to luxury. Uh, loyalty and, and CRM is, is, is very, very important in terms of how, how we uh, curate our, our guests and make sure that they continue to use our entire ecosystem. Michael, that's just it, isn't it? How do you use the ecosystem? How do you then take on the likes of Airbnb? Are you seeing off the challenge from Airbnb at the moment? I think you were saying that last time we were talking. But you also have to change the way that you present yourself, your interface with people and customers. How is all that evolving? Yeah, look, it's, it's going uh, well. You know, it, you know the, the private rental market, not just the Airbnb, continues to grow. Though I, I think the growth has probably slowed a little bit since we, we, we last spoke. Uh, and, and, you know, for us, what's in, in most important in terms of, of growing the business is, is, one, making sure that we give every guest that stays with us a, a great experience. And, and that starts with from when they start researching where, they, where they're going for a holiday or for business travel, when they decide which hotel to book, making sure the booking process is seamless, making sure the guest is very well looked after when they're staying in our hotel working with our loyalty program to reward them with not, not, not just points um, for future travel, but also guest recognition so that we can anticipate needs, satisfy those needs, make sure they, they, they um, enjoy themselves while they're with us, but then also make sure we continue to communicate with our guests once they leave the hotels so that we can encourage them to stay with us when they travel again. Michael, what will the hotel industry, and this is a very deep question, look like in 10 years' time? <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, the, the great thing about our industry is, in some respects, it hasn't changed that much. I, I often say before a guest arrive and after they leave, it's changed a lot. But when a guest is inside the hotel, it's still about great service. It's about, you know, great decor, it's about great food, great beverage. Uh, but most importantly, it's the, it's the people that work for us. And, you know, if you go to a review site, if it's not a new hotel or one that's recently renovated, most of the comments are about the people they interact with. And, and, you know, that's the great thing about our, our industry. It's still a people industry. And people still want to talk to someone. They still want a smile. They still want a recommendation. And that's why we spend so much time with, with our team, making sure that they are able to anticipate the needs of our guests when they're with us. So your house seems to be in order. What keeps you up at night then? What's the biggest risk? It's actually, you know, for me, what keeps me up at night mostly is people. Because if we do a, a, a you know, because it is a competitive world out there, not, not just within the industry, but, you know, trying to attract the best people that we can to, to work with us, developing their skills, uh, developing their careers, but then keeping them. And, you know, if we have a great team, then we're going to look after the guests and then everything else looks after itself. So it's that talent war of all the things that keep me up at night, it would be that.